Hello everyone, this here is the Lego Ninjago Crystal King, the Crystal King. I bought this for $80 US and built the whole thing live over on my Twitch channel. This has 722 pieces and five minifigures. It stands very proud and also very stable with the four-legged setup, trying to look like a, like a centaur, but with wings that are probably too small to actually fly with. Plus they're made of crystals anyway, but you know, just insert magic and anything you can think of can work. What you don't need any imagination to see though is how well sculpted this is, including the head, which is made of a ton of tiny little pieces, very, very tiny tightly put together. You can adjust the angles of the, the horns here a bit, but I just think that's an excellent looking face. I'm very satisfied with how that came together for something that's 100% brick built. This does use a handful of stickers, but most of them really aren't that important. Interestingly, this is 100% a mech. Makes it feel quite a bit like uh, uh, the Gundam creation Barbatoris, the the uh, operator's cabin is right here beneath this trans pink colored, relatively rare shape of, or uncommon shape of canopy. And there it is right there. And you just stand a person right there or uh, sit them right there. And yeah, it's not, it's not a thing of its own. You know, it's not sentient. The rib cage comes around the, the side here nicely. I just think that looks really good. And also these small little bits of add-ons around the waist really help to fill in the gaps or cover the gaps there. Interestingly, this does not have any articulation for the front legs, for the main legs, except down at the ankles and then at, at the toes. So, you know, you can spread the toes out. You can bring those together and you can rotate the the feet around a little bit you know maybe do something like that but up here at the hip at the forward hip there's absolutely nothing you can do that's completely static unless of course i mean it is lego so of course you can always modify things add your own pieces but i never review things based upon what the top one percent of of you know, higher end Lego creators can possibly do by adding tons and tons of their own money in their own time. We're doing this based on what's actually here. I like the arms. The arms do have plenty of articulation because they've got the ability to splay in and out and also rotate forward and back. You've also got ball joints right down here and then also ball joints all the way down at the hands. The hands are able to open and close. They got these nice claws on them and there are also clips on the inside to hold on to the staff in either hand. The staff has the large crystal element at the top of it, which is very nice. The other side just doesn't have that in it right now, but you can see that you know, you've got plenty of room to, to grab things with this. Another little trans pink element inside of there as well. But overall, I think the arms are done fantastically well and give you good play value. The wings can actually be flapped in and out, so that's good. And they have some more of the trans pink elements, including the new crystal ones. This right here, however, I think this this needs a new mold. I think it's a little bit faulty because it actually is pretty loose. This one is not as loose as the other side, but in some of these spots, I found that these pieces just don't have enough, uh, don't have a thick enough diameter towards the, the root of the bar section. Right at the tip of it, it's fine. But as you go farther in, then it gets super, super loose. I'm not too happy about that. Around the back, you can see more of the larger, more prominent stickers that add a little bit more value to at least the appearance of detail around the back. The rear, uh, the rear legs actually have well, almost 100% more articulation than the than the fronts because these actually can move. So you can do something with that. You can kind of create a little bit of a walking pose with the help of the. <laughs> With the help of the rears, I mean, that helps a ton, you know, to, to actually make this thing look like it's alive and not just f uh, fully a statue there. But it would have been nice to get something out of the front. So I understand they're trying to keep it stable, but something, come on, something. More crystal elements going all the way up here. And then once again, uh, this gets just a little bit too loose for, for comfort. I don't think it's going to fall out, but it just doesn't feel right to me. And this can all be bent in any kind of way, of course. And off camera while I was rotating this around, this fell out on its own, <laughs> fell right out of the tail right there. <laughs> so I was wrong about that. It can fall out on its own. Uh, I just realized that I didn't show you the articulation of the head, which is very good because you got a ball joint there in a good place. The joint itself is not too visible. So, you know, it, it just, it only adds, doesn't take anything away. You can also kind of bring this back to raise it up a little bit make it look a little bit more proud or have it looking forward and get to look down a little bit more than that. That's a 
about it's about it yeah as far as looking down but I, I like that i like everything about the head looking at figures on the left is the pilot of the mech it's the crystal king himself in the most simple smallest version of smallest form in the middle is a venge stone uh warrior and then on the right is a venge stone guard with two different torsos notice for those two but the same leg pieces lots of those nice crystal pieces which do work fine when inserted directly into uh, the the top of a open stud like that no worries about those falling out it's only when they're in something that's a little bit a little bit longer they're able to slide out but i love all the trans pink stuff uh so much so so much and also i really really like getting more gunmetal gray or dark pearl gray stuff now if you're worried about spoilers for the season, you definitely should not be watching videos about sets that, as it is, came out June 1. So two months ago, most of the world just came out August 1 in the United States. But underneath here, uh, there, it's that's who the Crystal King actually actually is. And that's why one of the versions has an extra stack of torso so you get more arms out of it. There are no uh, no heads underneath here these are these are the entire heads there are no minifig heads underneath they're designed really really well to capture light and to refract light all through there so that works out nicely and gives you the most crystalline appearance possible and there's no alternate face for the crystal king here harumi is back and on team crystallized or crystal eyes because look the pink in the eyes you get it and here's the latest version of lloyd not a bad looking lloyd uh, you know, just has the the right colors, I would say. You know, it looks it looks modern enough with the the production quality and everything, but looks classic enough as well. I think that this time around, the the ninja are treated really well graphically. You know, the visual design work I think is good. And underneath, yeah, just get those faces, and that's it. These are the leftover pieces: more weapons, more trans pink, more rare uh, turned up small animal horns. All good there, and this is what the sticker sheet looked like. Very straightforward stickers, easy to apply, easy to align, and also easy to leave off. All right, well, the price of eighty dollars US doesn't feel good to me for a couple of reasons. First reason is that it was listed at seventy dollars US until the moment it was released on Lego.com. It's one of those that got hit with the moment of release increase, price increase. It's been coming for a while, mostly an adjustment for inflation. But still, that that never feels good when you're all ready to buy something and then you go to buy it. And suddenly, suddenly, literally suddenly, immediately at that moment, the price is up. But not only that, it doesn't quite feel like $80 worth of stuff. It's one more objective reason, though. In the Eurozone, the base Euro price for this is 60 euros. Right now we're right about at parity. It's just about a one-to-one -one ratio between Euro to USD. And that also includes VAT, or essentially taxes, whereas the US retail price does not. So 60 euros is effective, effectively $60 US over in Europe with 20% tax compared to $80 US without tax over here. That doesn't make sense. It's 55 uh, pounds UK as well. So our price over here, in at least in, in North America, I believe, I think Canada is too high as well, is way out of whack and is whack. So I'm not too happy about that. In an ideal world, I'd love to see this be like $55. I can easily see it being 60 in 2022. I could see them asking 65 for it, but I'm going to be uncomfortable at that point. 70 is really pushing it it's feeling expensive especially for ninjago which traditionally has been one of the better deals as a theme right but it's 80 I've, I've got to see this on sale i must see it on sale fortunately it's at least a good set but it's not one of those sets that i feel is so good that it overcomes how overpriced that it is at least not in my mind just my emotional response to it is not positive enough for me to feel good about that price. But the figure selection is good. This is built nicely. I just really wish that it had articulation at the hips. Again, yes, you can modify that in yourself. I'm never gonna review something based on what you can possibly do to it yourself by adding your own parts, spending your own money, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This as it is, excellent with that one exception there. I like the parts. I love the head, especially. Yeah, just needs to be on sale a lot. 
unless you're on the other side of the Atlantic, in which case you might actually be getting a decent deal for this. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll talk to you again soon.